Hello, and welcome to another episode of Richard Maybe Presents. Each and every one of us are faced with moments in our lives when an individual comes into our life and touches our life, touches our heart, touches our inner being, challenges our thinking, and leaves a profound mark upon our heart, our mind, and our inner self for the rest of our lives. Such a time came to me when I was publishing the Lincoln Park Journal. And Jennifer, who owned and managed the Candy Castle store in Lincoln Park, came into my life, touched my heart, challenged my thinking, and left a mark upon me. Very sweet, kind, angelic young woman. Jennifer, this edition of Richard Maybe Presents is dedicated to you. Hello folks, Richard Maybe here with another episode of Richard Maybe Presents. Um, oh, first of all, before I get into the subject matter, I want to thank all the people who have emailed me and written in to me and, uh, you know, some of the emails aren't very kind, but you know, at least someone took the time to, to send in an email. And as crazy as that sounds, I actually appreciate that. Uh, and also, uh, oh my goodness gracious, um, you just have no idea what it means to me to get an email you know, get one of those um, attaboy emails. It just means a lot to me. Um, Opie's calling me. I'm doing this early in the morning, and I think he wants to eat his, he wants me to give get his breakfast. So I'm going to take a break, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um Hope he's a piece of work. When he wants to eat, uh, the whole world is supposed to stop and take care of him. So, um, lately, I've been thinking a lot about my days of publishing the old Lincoln Park Journal. And what a wonderful opportunity that was for me. Um, I would say I took a, I've taken a lot of writing courses and that kind of thing. And I don't mean to be critical of past teachers and that kind of thing, but I learned more about journalism in publishing the Lincoln Park Journal than I did from any newspaper I ever worked at, uh, any public relations job, any writing courses that I took, you know, in colleges and that kind of thing. So um, the days of the Lincoln Park Journal. I was in my early 30s. 
to late thirties. It was kind of a magical time in my life. And the, I just got to meet a lot of people and got to talk to people in the afternoon and that kind of thing. One of my advertisers that I was reflecting about upon in the last uh, week or so was um, a young woman and she owned the Candy Castle store. And this was on Boot and Turnpike. <clears throat> for one of description for people from Lincoln Park, um, she was in the A&P Plaza. That's what they call it, the A&P Plaza on Comley Road. From the A&P, she was about the seventh store on the right hand side. She was about my age. She was like in her early 30s. Cute as a button. Oh, cute as, I mean, cute as a button. Oh, and um, <clears throat> I had such a crush on her. Oh my goodness. I had such a crush on her. Um, very uh, kind, sweet young lady, but at the same time, tough as nails. You know, go in there. I never knew. You know, Richie, you got a moment? I want to talk to you. That last ad you did, there was a smudge. Upper right-hand corner, there was a smudge. <sighs> you know, then other times she'd be happy as a lark to see me and, you know, tell me the ad looked great and that kind of thing. Um, I was thinking, this is horrible. I am 95% sure her name was Jennifer. Oh, just cute as a button. I mean, oh, I, oh my goodness. I had a maxed out crush on her. And um, the whole time, she advertised pretty much every week. And uh, she made homemade fudge. Uh, she made like uh chocolate but you molded like say if you had you like base uh little junior like baseball well she could mold the chocolate into a a, a baseball player at bat or if um if sunny liked football you know, mold it into like a, into a football player, you know, ready to catch the, ready to catch the football. And the same thing for the girls, you know, it could make a cheerleader or whatever, you know. Hard, hard working lady. Um, and, um, You know, it was a funny thing. Uh, I'd park my car in the parking lot and get, I used my steering wheel as my desk. <laughs> I used my steering wheel as my desk. I would get all my thoughts together. Um, come, you know, I, I, the night before I thought up ideas for Candy Castle, for ad layouts and that kind of thing. And then it, it, it and then if it was like if it's baseball season, you know, you want to find a graphic of a, a little baseball player that she could mold milk chocolate into a baseball figure and that kind of thing. So um in my car and I had um 
it wasn't a spiral notebook. Let's go. Uh, um, kind of a simulated leather folder. And it had a clip on the right hand side, and I had all my data on, or my ideas and that kind of thing. Well, I'd get out of the car. I remember this so well. And I'd park at the end of the parking lot so there would not be a car on my left or on my right hand side. So I wouldn't get ding, get a ding. I had a yellow matador and I thought it was the coolest of cool cars. It was yellow. And, uh, check out on the internet, AMC matador. I just loved it. So I closed the car door and be about a, a walking distance of about seven or eight cars. And then the express lane where cars would drive by in front of the shopping center. Well, my heart would start beating like a big bass drum. The palms of my hands was like I just splashed them in water. I would be sweating. And this, I guess, the carotid sinus would be just beating um, like 100 beats a minute. And as I walked to Candy Castle, I would actually shake. My hands would shake a little bit, you know, a little like Don Knotts kind of thing, like Barney Fife kind of thing. But then after crossing the uh, throughway, you know, the, the expressway where the cars would drive by the shopping center in front of the stores, you come to the sidewalk, maybe about, eight, nine seconds, that little walk across the sidewalk to her door of her Candy Castle store. Oh my goodness gracious. Now, sometimes she would be in the front taking care of a customer or that kind of thing or putting fudge out and that kind of thing. And sometimes she would be in the back so she had a bell on the door. So you open the door. If she wasn't there, she'd come out. And oh my goodness, I had such a crush on her. She was, I, those of you who remember Candy Castle will attest to me, you know, how cute this young woman was. And she always wore an apron, denims. And in the fall and winter, uh, a sweater. And in the spring and summer, basically uh, a t-shirt, you know, uh, over her, over, uh, over her apron. She, she had the full apron. So it would be all covered with chocolate and everything like that. And uh, as she, if she was in the back, as she was in the back, she would uh, wipe her hands with her apron. And sometimes she'd smile and she'd say, Richie, it's so good to see you. And then other times she'd say, Richard, I've been waiting to see you. You had a smudge on that ad. So um, a lot of things were out of my hands with the printer. You know, sometimes they put a smudge mark on the ad. And uh, I took the consequences of that. Well, I guess after about five or six months, 
I've seen Jennifer every week. I used to see her on Tuesday. I would go to Jennifer about one. I had a routine. I was in concrete. One thirty, I'd see Jennifer. Then about, then I see some other advertisers. Then on Tuesdays, and then around three thirty, three forty-five, I'd go to see Harold at Total Hobby Shop. Well, um, hold on, please. Opie's calling me again. I'll be right back. I'm back. Opie and Floyd, between the two of them, they've got over 50 uh, toys. And they, they each, uh, Opie has a white mouse and Floyd has a brown mouse. So when Floyd is playing with his mouse, Opie doesn't necessarily think, oh, I want to play with my mouse. He thinks, I want to play with Floyd's mouse. And they get into it a little bit, so I just had to settle that. Uh, where was I now? Candy Castle, Jennifer. So after about six months or so, seeing Jennifer every Tuesday, talking with her, about 15, 20 minutes, you know. And um, I remember thinking, I'm going to ask her for a date. Well, I'd get in there and we'd be small talking it and we'd talk, well, not gossipy, <clears throat> not in a bad way. We'd talk about people from Lincoln Park, and I mean this respectfully, there were some real characters in Lincoln Park. I mean, there were some really, I, I, I hate to say, it, there's some humorous people in Lincoln Park. So we'd have a couple laughs over the people of Lincoln Park. At any rate, for about four or five times, when I opened that door, I would say to myself, this is it. I'm going to ask Jennifer for a date. And I'd chicken out. But there was something in my mind that said, she never mentioned a boyfriend, having a boyfriend or anything like that. She was devoted to her business. And she was determined to make it a big success. So, I kind of knew, and she liked me, I think she liked me a lot, but she liked me um, as a distraction at 2 o'clock on, or 1.30, 2 o'clock on Tuesdays. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think she looked forward to seeing me on Tuesday afternoons. But I'm not so sure that she liked me enough to go on a date with me. I'll never know. I'm 66 years old. It's one of the things I wonder about. So... I can't turn the clock back. And then I always thought, well, if I ask Jennifer for a date and she turns me down, it'll be really awkward after that. And I could lose an advertiser. You know, I mean, she, it might be so awkward, you know. <sighs> it was a funny thing. You call it fate, destiny, uh, you know. Uh, society was changing around 1989. Uh, and it seemed right around 1989, people were not shopping in their little Mayberries anymore. They were going out to the highway. You know, and um, 
So a lot of the stores right around 1989 were becoming vacant. And uh, I call it a butcher's paper. This, this brown paper would be put on the window. And sometimes newspaper would be put on the, on the, from the inside of the window. You see a for rent sign. And there'd be a for rent sign there for maybe six months to a year. And then the next thing you know, uh, those vacant uh, shops were being occupied by tattoo parlors. This is about 1990, 1991. They're being occupied by tattoo parlors, psychics, um, kind of like a, not a dollar store, but kind of a, I don't mean to be unkind about it, but a, kind of a junk shop, you know, like a thrift shop, like some, they, they, they would sell uh, stuff almost that they got out of a dipsy dumpster or, you know, that people had in their attic, you know, collectible kind of stuff. So, um, I guess there's an, I started at Amalgamated Consolidated around 1989-ish. And I just, I was losing my, uh, towards, I, I had a, a double page center page um, for a car dealership in Lincoln Park. And they put an ad in every single week. And then when they went to cable TV, the, the owner and the manager had hit, they, they, they made the pitch and they, he put his daughter and his son on the TV commercials, the cable TV commercials. And, and there really wasn't the funding then for to advertise in newspapers. And I understand that. So after, after losing the car dealership, that double page ad, which really covered almost just about covered my printing expenses. And then my sundry expenses were covered by my smaller ads. I was struggling and I jumped ship from Lincoln Park Journal to Amalgamated Consolidated. I got a job in public relations around 1989. And actually I'm glad I did because I, I get a pension from Amalgamated Consolidated and I wouldn't, I, I owned Lincoln Park Journal, so I wouldn't get a pension from Lincoln Park Journal. But um, back to Jennifer. And to all the young people out there, I know how chauvinist this is going to sound, but please allow me to all the young men out there who are right now, they have a Jennifer in their life. You know, that, that young lady, that young woman that you know, you kind of see in a casual setting it might be, you know, she works at the grocery store, she works at the convenience store, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, you're wondering, oh, I'd like to ask her out, but is she out of my, am, am, is she, am I out of her league? Uh, What is she going to say if I ask her out? To all the young men out there encountering this, the single young men, um, just take a deep breath and ask that young lady out for a date. Because the last thing you'll want is that 66 years old wondering, would she have said yes if I asked her out for a date?
Well, if anyone remembers Candy Castle, let me know. I mean, and stranger things have, have happened. Jennifer, if you're out there, it was always um, a pleasure and honor to talk to you. I think I'm going to close up now. Once again, as always, thank you for taking the time and watching my vlog. And um, as Roy Rogers would always say, happy trails until we meet again.